This information is for you if you are about to have or are recovering from an operation to empty your uterus or womb. This is done to take away a pregnancy if it has not developed or if the pregnancy tissue has not all come away as part of a miscarriage. The operation involves removing the pregnancy tissue from the uterus through the vagina. You might also find it useful to share this information with your family and friends. The information in this video covers the practical aspects of recovering from surgical management of a miscarriage. However, losing a pregnancy is a deeply personal experience that affects people differently. It can be a very distressing experience and you are likely to need considerable support afterwards. You can find further information and support online from the Miscarriage Association and from NHS Choices. This information, together with any other information you have been given, will help you understand your choices and the operation itself. Every woman has different needs and recovers in different ways. Your own recovery will depend on how fit and well you are before your operation, whether there are any complications, your way of coping with the loss of your pregnancy and your circumstances. What can I expect after this operation? How long will I have to stay in hospital? This operation is usually done as a day case, which means that you can go home on the same day. What are the after effects of general anaesthetic? Most modern anaesthetics are short lasting. You should not have or suffer from any after effects for more than a day after your operation. During the first 24 hours, you may feel more sleepy than usual and your judgment might be impaired. If you drink any alcohol, it will affect you more than normal. You should have an adult with you during this time and you should not drive or make important decisions. Will I have a lot of bleeding? You can expect to have some vaginal bleeding for one to two weeks after your operation. This is like a heavy period for the first day or so. This should lessen and become more brown in colour. You should use sanitary towels rather than tampons as using tampons could increase the risk of infection. Will it be painful? You can expect some cramps, similar to strong period pains in your lower abdomen on the day of your operation. You may get milder cramps or an ache for a day or so afterwards. When leaving hospital, you should be provided with simple painkillers to reduce any discomfort. Sometimes painkillers that contain codeine or dihydrocodeine can make you feel quite sleepy and sick and constipated. If you do need to take these medications, try to eat extra fruit and fibre to reduce the chances of becoming constipated. Will I be able to eat and drink after the operation? Once you have woken up from the anaesthetic and are not feeling too nauseous, you will be offered a drink of water or a cup of tea and something light to eat. Once you are home, you can eat and drink as normal. What about washing and showering? You should be able to have a shower or a bath as normal after the operation. It is advisable to have someone at home with you initially so that they can help you if you become dizzy or feel faint. There is a small risk of blood clots forming in the veins in your legs and your pelvis, referred to as deep vein thrombosis. This can occur after any operation. These clots can travel to the lungs, causing a pulmonary embolism, which could be serious. You can reduce the risk of clots by being as mobile as you can, as early as you can after your operation. Doing exercise when you are resting, for example, pumping each foot up and down briskly for 30 seconds, moving your ankles, moving each foot in a circular motion for 30 seconds, and bending and straightening your legs, one leg at a time, three times for each leg. You may also be given some other measures to reduce the risk of a clot developing particularly if you are overweight or have health issues. These measures may include daily heparin injections, which is a blood thinning agent. You may need to continue having these injections daily when you go home. Your doctor will advise you on the length you should have these injections for. Graduated compression stockings, which should be worn day and night until your movement has improved and your mobility is no longer significantly reduced. Special boots that inflate and deflate to wear while you are in hospital. Will I feel tired afterwards? 
You may feel very tired while your body is healing and you may want to have a rest or a nap during the day in the first few days after your operation. A miscarriage affects every woman differently. Some women come to terms with what has happened within a few weeks, while others it takes longer. Many women feel tearful and emotional for a short time afterwards. Some women experience intense grief over a longer time. Why might it take longer to recover from an operation? It can take longer to recover if you've had health problems before your operation. For example, women with diabetes may heal more slowly and may be prone to infections. If you smoke, smokers are at increased risk of getting a chest infection or a wound infection during their recovery and smoking can delay the healing process. For women who are overweight, it can take longer to recover from the effects of the anaesthetic and there is a higher risk of complications such as infection and thrombosis. If there were any complications during your operation, it could take you longer to recover. It can also take longer if you've had previous miscarriages or if you have taken a long time to get pregnant. Recovering after an operation is a very personal experience if you are following all the advice that you've been given but do not think that you're at the stage you ought to be, talk to your GP. When should I seek advice after the operation for a miscarriage? As with any operation, complications can occur after an operation for a miscarriage. You should seek medical advice from your GP, your early pregnancy assessment unit, the hospital where you had your operation, NHS 111 or NHS 24 if you experience any of the following heavy or prolonged vaginal bleeding, smelly vaginal discharge and abdominal pain. If you also have a raised temperature or fever and flu-like symptoms this might be due to an infection of the lining of the uterus or womb. This occurs in two to three women in a hundred or two to three percent. Treatment is with antibiotics. Occasionally there is still pregnancy tissue remaining in the uterus and you may need another operation to remove this from the uterus. Increasing abdominal pain and feeling unwell. If you also have a temperature or fever and have lost your appetite and are vomiting, this may be due to damage to your uterus. You will need to be readmitted to hospital. Burning and stinging when you pass urine or if you're passing urine frequently. This may be due to a urine infection. Treatment is with a course of antibiotics. A painful, red, swollen or hot leg or difficulty bearing weight on your leg. This may be due to a deep vein thrombosis or DVT. If you have shortness of breath or chest pain or cough up blood, this could be a sign that a blood clot has travelled to your lungs causing a pulmonary embolism. If you have any of these symptoms, you should seek medical help immediately. You can have sex as soon as you both feel ready. It is important that you are feeling well and any pain and bleeding has significantly reduced. It is possible to conceive a few weeks after your operation, even before you've had a period. You may wish to talk to your GP about contraception or visit your local family planning clinic to discuss this. If you wish to be pregnant, trying again soon, whenever you feel ready, does not increase your risk of miscarrying the next time. It may be worth taking this opportunity to talk to your GP about anything you can do to prepare for a pregnancy. When will I be fit to return to work? When you return to work depends on how you feel. It is advisable to rest for a few days following your operation, then start your routine activities. However, you will not be harmed by getting back to normal work within a day or two of the operation, particularly if you can work from home. Most women who work need between a few days and a week off work. You may need longer to recover emotionally. If so, it may be helpful to talk to your GP or occupational health advisor. Some women worry about returning to work. However, once they are there, they find that getting back into a routine and getting support from colleagues helps them. Leaving it for too long before you go back to work can make it more difficult for you. You could try going back and seeing how you feel. Some women continue to experience discomfort and feelings of sadness when they first return to work. If you do manual work or have to stand for long periods, you might need more time off than if you were sitting at a desk. 
If your job involves manual work or you're still recovering emotionally, it might be possible to start back on shorter duties or lighter duties. Talk with your employer about this. You should gradually build up your activities at work as well as at home. It is normal not to be able to undertake your full workload when you first go back. You should not feel pressurised by family, friends or your employer to return to work before you feel ready. You do not need your GP's permission to go back to work. This decision is yours.